And as our coverage continues over the chaos in Washington, we're getting plenty more local reaction. Yeah, joining us via Skype right now, Southern Connecticut State University, political science professor Dr. Jonathan Wharton. Uh, it's been a while, Dr. Wharton. Thank you so much for joining us again. Thank you for including me. Yeah, glad to have you here. I want to start right off the bat because you are very active on Twitter. Uh, something you tweeted yesterday that you said uh, your Congress, a.k.a. your former employer, mm. is having an attempted coup by my rogue party. Very strong words. Certainly uh, a lot of other people using those words as well. So why don't we just start with your initial reaction, the shock of, of what happened? Well, so many people are framing it in different ways, right? Some people see it as protesters. Some people are protesting. Others see this as a riot. Maybe I framed it, yes, as an attempted coup. Uh, you know, it's going to take a while to exactly understand what took place. Uh, this is an unusual moment for something like this to happen, uh, especially when this is a time when Congress is doing its duty of certifying what happened in the elections back in November in Electoral College in December. Now, you had mentioned during the break that you worked um, in Congress. Talk about your time there and the security you saw compared to what you saw yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I was fortunate to work for Congress for six years uh, back in the late 90s. And, you know, the truth is, is that there were a lot of Capitol Hill police, even Capitol Hill security. They were always there on guard. And it makes me wonder, not even saying so much as a political scientist, but just as a former congressional staffer, how prepared were they for yesterday? Did they have enough police on hand or not? I think these details have to come out, and certainly hearings and some investigative work will be required to be prepared for the next time. The next time could easily be Inauguration Day. Of course, political science and rhetoric and oratory all very much intertwined. And like you said before, doctor, words matter. And uh, whether people are calling this a coup, a self-coup. And then, of course, uh, there's a lot of debate this morning about uh, whether this was really incited by the president or whether it was just colorful language. Uh, take us through your thinking on that, that the rhetoric of the day and the rhetoric leading up to this day. I think it's all the above. You know, when you have something in terms of what took place there for a uh, demonstration, certainly a protest right in front of the Capitol, as I said, on a ceremonial day, that is highly unusual. And so words do matter. It can certainly incite people to be persuaded and easily coerced into doing whatever is necessary or possible. Uh, it's unfortunate. But the truth is, is that how can we pin this exactly on the president, or anyone for that matter, when you are guiding or influencing a mob or a group or cohort or whomever of supporters to do whatever actionary is, measures are, are required in terms for some people to see it that way? Uh, so it's, it's going to see, I think a lot of this is still going to come out. Uh, I don't think we're done with this yet. All right, Dr. Wharton, thank you so much for your time and for your insight.